Okay, let us be clear about something that I'm about to talk about here. Tom Brevoort is the is the is this is the senior president pre, is the senior um editor at Marvel. Marvel is a publicly traded company. That means that they take investors' money. That means that they take little people's money. And they promise them that they will work the hardest. They are actually required by law to do everything within their power to give those investors a return on their money. Now, let us uh, also be clear that comic books are in trouble. So, basically, Tom Brevoort's job, legally, job not only is it in his description under his employment with marvel comics but his job required by law is to try and increase sales since that is how marvel comics makes money it is not to drive away people for to keep his company ideologically pure yeah whatever that means or to keep it you know to, to keep those evil white men, which he is one of them, out of comics. His job is to increase sales. Anything else he does is, even if it doesn't cross the line, even if there isn't a law that crosses the line, it is in spirit fraud because Marvel is taking money from investors under false pretenses saying, oh yeah, we'll give you a return on your investment and then turning around and saying, nope, nope, we're not going to do that. And make no mistake, comics are in trouble. There is a market for sequential art in the United States. Look, this this comes from this comes from the Hollywood Reporter, published December twenty eighth, two thousand seventeen. DC takes over a declining market, which comic which comics sold best in two thousand seventeen. Now DC. Uh, doesn't engage in Tom Brevant or the rest of Marvel's blockbot action. Here's Tom Brevant. He's, and, well, anyway, here is this. Here are the top-selling comics of 2017. And yes, you'll see that Marvel is at the top. Marvel Legacy number one, 3,300, 500, 3,000 and 74 issues dark knight metal 2000 and then it just drops from there but the big number is marvel legacy number one yeah three thousand now let's go to comicbook.com slash anime and let's see the reports on the back and yes this does include japan but those include worldwide sales too so here are the worldwide sales for the top-selling manga. Many uh, and all add. As far as I could tell, all of these ki all of these titles have been translated into English. So here's the thing. Manga looks looks cheaper in that it's black and white. Black and white has always struggled. Also, you have to learn to read right to left. So there's a learning curve to manga. And yet, yet, look. Without even getting into the 11 million, One Piece totally obliterates the sales just with the 494,532 copies it sold. You then add attack on the 11 million and you start getting out here. My Hero Academia. Again, 5 million. Nothing sold less than 2 million copies. Do you realize what that means? That means that, yeah, you sold nearly 3 million copies. The lowest selling manga still sold, still sold, or still sold just, oh, just over, yeah. Well, let's be generous. Let's just say um, it still sold just over eight times as many copies as the best-selling U.S. comic book. And yet, and yet, 
because of these movies and because Disney doesn't take notice of, because the movies are so big, Disney doesn't even take notice of the plot. Tom Brevoort, he feels secure when somebody, uh, when somebody says that they are, says that they were, um, that, that they don't, that they are not going to buy from a creator who's blocking them. He feels secure in saying that it's not their job to sell comics. Uh, yeah, Tom, it is your job to sell comics. You're defrauding investors with your actions here. This is insane. This is why the U.S. comic market is in trouble. Here's the thing. You notice how that article, Hollywood, talked about um, DC taking over a shrinking market? Well, hmm. Um, let... Well, um, guess what? As you, uh, go down... Guess what? You know who I don't find blocking people? Tons of DC talent. In fact, I have a... In fact, I follow a lot of comic book talent, and I don't see anyone from DC blocking people. I don't see anybody from DC using block bots. I can talk... And here's the thing. I don't always agree with their politics. We, we've had, we have this guy, I mean, but I can talk to people like Peter J. Tosomi on Twitter or follow his announcements about his latest book. I can uh, follow, I can follow Tom King. I can, uh, Tom King is a lot of fun to follow. And in case you wanted more proof that uh, this is just, that this is just a bad idea, well, um, Marvel used to be the welcoming company. When I started reading Marvel, you know, 27 years ago, um, it was the welcoming company. I mean, they welcomed letters. They, they treated you with respect. They, they, you know, you felt like the letter section was just this welcoming community. Now it's get the Get the F out of our faces, you miserable little pieces of garbage. How dare you be buying comics? Don't buy comics. You are pieces of garbage for buying comics. But please, when our when our writers can't afford a sandwich, please, fund our Kickstarter. And I and I don't like to go full comic gate because I don't like everything they stand for, but this much the this much should be clear. If you have money invested in Marvel, get it out. The superhero bubble is going to burst at some point. And when it does, that'll be the end. Because these sales numbers cannot be justified when something imported from Japan in black and white that people have to learn a whole new way of reading, have to go counterintuitive of the way that they were taught to read can bring in so much better numbers. Why, why would you invest money putting together color comic books on more expensive paper? Comic books are doomed, and it's because of people like Tom Bervont or have been put in charge of sales. And their job is to sell. If you're at a publicly traded company, your job is to sell the product. When I was at when I was at Mar when I was um, at Walmart. No matter what my job was, whether it be unloading a truck, whether it be pushing shopping carts, whether it be running a cash register, whether it be running the electronics section, my job was to make sales for Walmart. My job was always to make a good impression on the customers, and it was always to help them generate sales by, by making things easy to find. If people couldn't find something, helping them. That was the number one thing. You were supposed to drop everything you were doing and be polite. Even when somebody got in my face and started yelling and cursing at me and physically threatened me. And that happened. And that happens at Walmart. That it happens. I mean, I, I had I had an old lady start screaming in my face because I was put on the door one Christmas Eve and we just had to close up. And the only way to close up on Christmas Eve at Walmart is to start let is to start letting is to stop letting people come in the store. But I never once, one of the things my, my, um, was it right I just talked about, I never once lost my temper. And if, and people who did lose their tempers with customers, guess what? They were out of there. But Marvel com comics ha are such a slum.
They're such a slum with people with so little self-respect that they don't care about. They're, they don't care. They have lower standards than Walmart. You know how you see that people of Walmart website? Maybe we should have a people of com of Marvel website because Marvel Comics at least has such low standards and so little self-respect. The people who work there have so little self-respect that they set lower standards for themselves than Walmart does. That And that is the sad point we have gotten to. We have gotten to the sad point where I directly contact the person, one of the chief people in charge of generating sales for Marvel. I directly contact him on Twitter and let him know that because of his attitude, 27 years of buying Marvel Comics is coming to an end for me. Over a quarter of a century. A quarter of a century of buying Marvel Comics is coming to an end for me. It's come to an end for me. And I get no response. Despite these abysmal sales numbers. You know, Marvel used to have a policy when I was a kid that anything that sold, anything that sold less than half a million copies a month was canceled. Now, that's the best-selling book on the marketplace. They've shrunk it to such an extent. And you can see, and you can see just random issues of The Flash beating event, you know, going up, you know, moving up and beating events. I mean, look, you have just two random issues of The Flash beating a, an event from Marvel. And want to know why? Because DC treats their customers with respect and doesn't use block bots and doesn't have the attitude of, get out of here, we don't want you. Well, Marvel, you don't want me? You think you don't need my money? <laughs> Once that superhero bubble bursts, you're just there because they think you're going to give them ideas. Once they start trying some of the ideas that have been coming out of Marvel lately in movies and they crash and burn, and, the, and they cause the superhero bubble to burst, Disney is going to figure they don't need you anymore. They're probably going to license out the characters to manga publishers who will bring in these kind of numbers for, for Marvel characters, and you will be out of a job. So enjoy the gravy trip. So enjoy your employment while it lasts, because I'm sad to say I do not see Mar Marvel Comics, the publishing arm of Marvel Comics, lasting more than another five years tops and that's without a crash of some kind from the uh superhero movie genre and i think we'll get fatigue with that after avengers 4 but that's but that's just pure speculation on my part but yeah i normally don't make these kinds of videos but this just made me sick seeing Comparing this to the Marvel comics I grew up with where they welcomed all feedback and even if they didn't agree with it they'd say they basically s send you a politely worded form reply of uh, well yeah well, we're not doing it that way but that but what you said that was an interesting idea and we understand why you feel that way but here's why here's where we're going to do it and keep going true believers you want to know why Stan Lee has to be kept around because he understands good old-fashioned customer service, and he's Mr. Nice Guy who goes, Hey, true believers, I welcome you all. He's the last guy. Everyone else at Marvel wants you to get out, wants you to stay away, because we're artists and we're better than you, so we hate you. Stan Lee is the last guy who understands that, Hey, you're, hey, I'm making this for you, and we're all enjoying this together, and we're all supposed to be having fun doing this together. And, yeah, and... Thanks for your support, and yeah, you're part of a family too. You're part, you're the reason we exist. That's why they have to keep Stan Lee coming in for cameos, and that's why, um, yeah, and that, that it's just sad. It's sad to see the house that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and the rest of them built reduced to this, to me. It's just to this petty bitter place run by bitter old run by bitter hate-filled old men who don't like their job and take it out on the customers and who hate the art form they work in so again they take it out on the people buying it to me it's just sad what do you think